Uh, now, you've chosen your great... What, what, what's your synopsis here? What have you gone for? What's your brief? Is it so, best, favourite, what? Yeah, I didn't, know, I didn't know whether it was my best five goalkeepers, the goalkeepers who I think have been the best in the Premier League era, or my favourite five goalkeepers, the ones who I like to watch the most. Okay. Sure. What one have you chosen? Do you know yet? I'm probably just going to go for a mix of the two. I've written down five. I reckon these five will be in there. Okay. Right, okay. Yeah. Can I just, before we do it, who was your, uh, uh, as a goalkeeper, as a young kid coming in, well, how old were you when you started off in the game? Uh, 18. Okay. So did you have, was your favourite player a goalkeeper? Yeah. You As a goalie, you always have a, you, people will say, who was your favourite goalkeeper okay. growing up? So for me, it was Peter Schmeichel. Right. So I think whilst we do, we, while we're starting this segment, we, he has to be on the list. Peter Schmeichel has to be okay, in the don't list. Tell of, us, don't tell us where then, because yeah, we've okay. got numbers five to one. Oh, do I have to do them in order? Like, that's the bit that kills me, because yeah, I feel like yeah, I'm... Yeah, you do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk sport, mate. If you want to sit with the big boys, you play with the big boys. Right, are they ready to clip it up? <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. they are. So, <laughs> yes, they are. I'm guessing we've only got five, four, three, yeah, so I'll, I'll so ad-lib the... Okay, so how many have you got? Right, I've got a five. I've got a you five. Yeah, I've got okay. five. Yeah, I've got you a sure? five. And yeah. this is in the order, so this is the fifth now. Yeah, all the way up to your favourite ever. Yes. Okay, let's start then. Number five. Right, I'm gonna go for only for the fact, and he's only number five for the fact that he's only been in the Premier League for a few years so far. But he is one of two new wave of goalkeepers that are just transforming the way that goalkeepers implement themselves okay. in football nowadays. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know one, one of them one is two, right? Yeah, one of two. Liverpool, so, Man City. So, the f- number five is Alisson. Okay, I've got him on there. Yeah, Alisson's number number five. 130, I've got, got stats as well. Oh, okay. 138 games so far, 64 clean sheets, which is basically one and two. When, when you're a goalkeeper, do you get a clean sheet bonus? Some do, yeah, some did, do. Did you? Uh, the only bonus I ever had was if I kept 10 clean sheets in a season, then you would get a bonus towards at the end. Okay. What sort of money are we talking for a bonus? Oh, gee whiz. Yeah, gee whiz. I don't know. Um, <laughs> for that, I can't, I, I can't remember. I Roughly. Really can't. You can. <laughs> <laughs> it, might be, it might be the same as like two weeks wages or something. Okay, so in Bentley's case, it's about 150 yeah, grand. Stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What makes him so good then, do you think? Alisson, mm. um, he's, I, I just, I, he just don't care. I think that's that's the beauty. I think nowadays, in, to be a, a real top goalkeeper, you've got to have this fearlessness where you just do not care about the consequences. Because if you start reading into all what can go wrong and what will go wrong and imagine I make a mistake here, it's going to be all over the Twitter and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. But he just doesn't seem to have that. He don't care. Does all that go through your head then? 100%. 100%. Does if you're in the really? last few minutes of the game, the last knockings, and you get a ball into the box and you think, if I come for this ball and miss it or drop this it... this is going on in your head? 100%. Goalie's the, the worst position for it as well because you, you haven't even got to run around. So, like, Benty would be running around and it would take his mind off stuff because he's got stuff to work... He's working, he's blowing, yeah. and he's like... <gasps> you, whereas goalies, you're just sort of chilling in your own head. It's horrible, honestly. It's a horrible thing to have. Goalkeepers union, weirdos. Bunch of weirdos. <laughs> Bunch of weirdos. So that from your, the mental side of things, yeah. the confidence side of things as well, that's totally different to an outfield player. Completely different. Completely different. I guarantee you there's players that are playing in the Premier League every single week that going into games, going, just don't mess up. Just don't mess up. And that's the worst place to be. When you're in that position, and I've been there myself, it is the worst place to be. When you have a clangor, does it stay with you for days, hours, weeks, what? It will, it will, you'll kind of switch off for, it for the week, but then when you get to the next game... You still there? Yeah, it's still there. Yeah. You quickly remember it. Is, the is next it literally week. you're only as good as your last game? As soon as, yeah. soon as if you've had a clang out, the next game starts. You have a good game. That's gone. It's gone. Yeah, but mm-hmm. then. This is why I always, like, when I see goalies, like, celebrating and stuff, when they make a save or a penalty save, they're punching the air, they're celebrating. I'm thinking, don't do that, because you probably just give a corner away anyway. They All they've got to do is swing that ball in, you miss it, you're, oh you're looking so like you a prize. you are glass half empty, right? Yeah, you've got... This is what I'm saying, though. If you can turn it and be like an Allison, then you can smash it, honestly. Because he's... I think there's... In the Premier League now, 20, play, 20 goalkeepers playing week in, week out... I think they're all similar-ish in terms of ability. They can all make saves, they can all pass, all that kind of stuff. They, technically, they're all about as good as each other. Mm. The difference is what's in between your ears. That's the big difference. Okay. That's your number five? Yep. Okay, next one. Number four. Number four, again, only because he's been playing for a few years in the Premier League. Um, one of the two I was just talking about, the, the, yeah, the, the, you know, that new breed, that new wave of goalkeepers. Um, and I've got him just above Alisson because I... I just think he's got the edge of him just a little bit and it's Edison. Uh, number four, Edison. And 
again, he's got that no fear in him. He don't care. I've seen him croif people. <laughs> I've seen him croif people nuts, on his it? six yard box, on his goal line. Like that's not that can't even enter my head. Like I've seen him. He, it's like he waits for the player to get so close to him to drag him out of position, mm. and then he'll play it to his defender. And then there's a player exposed, a player committed, one less player for the rest of the lads to get past. What, what do you think that does for the centre halves, knowing that the goalkeeper's got that confidence? So for argument's sake, the two centre halves. I know they change in the second half for United, but you Maguire and Martinez or Martinez that starts when you see your goalkeeper make a mistake like that and you think he's lacking confidence yeah. does that put you off your game do you think as a centre half a little bit a little bit but the, but you can sort of caveat that as well with the fact of I don't think Harry Maguire and Martinez necessarily want that ball either Where whereas the Liverpool two centre backs Van Dijk or you know the, the Man City ones Diaz they want that ball they will they, will, mm. they know they fully trust their goalie so they will wait in a little position which they know he's got an outlet then. The wingers, like, sorry, the fullbacks will stay fully wide as mm. well. Fully, fully wide. Whereas I think the Man United players, nobody's really on the same page at the minute. So they're kind of hiding a little bit. Like, I, I couldn't have the ball because I, no chance. Whereas the Man City players will go, no, I'm staying out there and I'll give you the option. Okay. Uh, that was number four. Let's move on. Uh, number by the way, three. Oh, hold on. Sorry, by the way, Edison, 184 games, 93 clean sheets. It's wow. about, again, That's one in two. One in two, same as Alison. Okay. Can we press number about, three. Hold on. Not yet, Ryan. Can we press about now? Yeah, we're good okay, to go. Number now. four. No, no, the other one. <laughs> Number two. No, we haven't. We, that Number three. There you go, there's the one. Um, I, I'm going to go with a goalkeeper that I played with um, at Manchester United. And okay. only because I got to see him up close and personal. And not only as a goalie, but as a bloke, as a man. Like, he taught me so much, honestly. He taught me so much about being a goalie, so much about being a... Like, a, just about life, basically. His outlook was incredible. He was the calmest man I've ever come across. Like Edwin? Edwin. Edwin van der Sar. The guy was just... Phew, he was incredible. I've ne- I don't think, at that time, for Man United, when they were in their pomp, there was not a goalie in the world that could do, for Man United, what Edwin van der Sar did. Uh, underrated, do you think? Massively. Massively. He used to come out, do you know what, right? He was getting towards the end of his career, 35, 36, when he signed for Man United, I think. And he would come out to training only probably three days a week, right? And I remember on Friday sometimes, he would come out, he would literally catch about three or four volleys, and even then might not catch them, pat them down, and he would sort of squeeze the ball a bit, look at the goalie coach and go, that's me done. And the goalie coach would go, cool. And he would just walk in because it was all about Saturday. It was all in his head and he just knew what he was doing. Yeah, he was wow. incredible. But a goalkeeper couldn't get away with that nowadays, right? Yeah, there's still the goalies that do that. There's still goalies that are like that. What, that's it? I've had enough training? Yeah, yeah. As long as you're good to go tomorrow. You've got to think, the, the Saturday is what pays the bills. Like You can be as good as you I want know, in but training. But you can't do that as a defender or a midfield or an outfield okay, right, listen, Ledley King did it. Yeah, Ledley King. He, 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 he had horrific knees. Yeah, but he still right? played on the Saturday and was, wow, exceptional. <laughs> okay. As a goalkeeper, when you're on the bench, are you thinking, get injured? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, depends depends what stage of your career you're at. If you're at any stage, no. If you're younger, if you're younger and you you want to do a bit and you're trying to get that little break to get into the team, then you're not saying get injured, but have a bad run of form or something. So yeah, you want, you want clangers. No, I don't. I'm just saying this is what might be the consensus for goalkeepers mm, okay. out there, right? But when you get a bit older, like at my age, I just want the team to do well. I want him to help the team, and I want the team to win. 